Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm gonna do a classic rock reaction, man. This is a complimentary quad, and it's featuring the music of the Jay Giles Band. Um, my understanding is that they had two different periods of uh, success in their um, career in the uh, 70s and in the 80s. So we're gonna check out what they were up to in the 70s here, man. We're gonna start off with, uh, and this is all live, Looking for Love, live in 74. Must have got lost with a full intro. Uh, Just Can't Stop Me in the Boston Garden in 79. And Whammer Jammer, live in Paris in 79. So before I pop this off, man, I just wanna give a shout out and a thanks to Vernon Miller. Vernon, thanks very much, man. Thanks for the recommendations and the links. So, uh, Vernon has a note for me. He says, uh, Hi, Wayne. This is going to be four tracks from the early Jay Giles band from back when they were an R&B rock and blues band. I just got through checking out your album reaction to the fantastic Paul Butterfield East West album, and it got me to thinking about these guys. So here are the four songs, all released before 75, from a highly underappreciated group, in my opinion. The sound on these is okay, just okay. Not as crisp as the studio tracks, but I really wanted you to see the live versions. A couple of the vids are from late 70s performances, but the songs themselves were originally recorded by them in the early 70s. This is an extremely talented band that doesn't get their props. And one more example of why the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is a joke. (laughs) Oh, Vernon, don't get me started on that shit. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, okay. Keep reading, Mike. Jay Giles on guitars, Peter Wolf on lead vocals, Seth Justman on keys, Magic Dick on harps, and Danny Klein on bass, and also Billy Joe Blads on drums. Enjoy. All right. I will for sure, brother. So, looking for love. Looking for a love. Live in 74. Looking for a love, Jay Giles Band, live in 74. Let's get it. Okay. Can't see what the crowd's doing.
So there we are, the Jay Gars band starting off tonight's programme with a song from their new Full House LP, and that was Looking for a Love. The okay, now what was this show? Was this the uh, Grey Whistle Test, was it? I recognise that lad there at the end. Um, let me know. All right. So that is what Jake Isles Band looks like live. Definitely very, very spirited, very animated. Nice uh, funky rock grooves. Excellent. Looking for a love. Uh, live in 74. So. Um, yeah, I thought so. Yeah, looking for a love. Our old Bobby Womack track. Um, I was thrown off a little bit because his backing vocals are uh, ladies. And of course, you know, from a studio cut to, um, you know, a live uh, rendition is sometimes so different. Okay, so Looking for a Love. Looking for a Love is a song written by J.W. Alexander and Zelda Samuels and was the debut hit of the family group, The Valentinos, which featured Bobby Womack. The song was a hit for the Valentinos, climbing to number 8 on the R&B chart and crossing over to number 72 on the Billboard Hot 162, released on Sam Cooke's SAR label. In 71, rock band The Jay Giles Band covered the song as one of its first releases and the song became a top 40 hit for them, peaking at number 39. It appears on the morning after their second studio their second studio album. It was released on October 2nd, 1971 by Atlantic Records. And uh, there's an album review here by uh, Tim Sandra of All Music. All Music says, The Morning After is a near perfect follow-up to the Jay Giles Band's self-titled debut album. It's more of the same winning blend of rock out blues, jumped up soul, and pure rock and roll wildness with enough attitude and energy to get a club full of people from zero to sweaty in less than 60 seconds. Featuring the original versions of songs that became radio staples in their live incarnations, Looking for Love, The Magic Dick Showcase, Whammer Jammer, a batch of uh, covers of rare soul gems like So Sharp, Don Cave's The Usual Place, and the aforementioned Looking for Love, and some fine originals like the rip-roaring opener, I Don't, I Don't Need You No More, the very funky Gotta Have Your Love, and the heart-rendering ballad Cry One More Time, which was covered memorably by Graham Parsons on the Graham Parsons debut album. The Morning After is definite proof that the Jay Giles band were well on their way to becoming one of the best rock and roll bands of any era. All right, man. That concludes our look at Looking for a Love. So let's check out our next track, man. Must have got lost. Jay Giles Band. Ah, oh, it's a nice lengthy one. It's almost seven minutes. Must have got lost. Full wolf rap. <laughs> Let's get it. Well, hold on. This song has Peter a little introduction to it. It ain't supposed to be sad, though you might feel it that way. It's a song about desperation. Every now and then we do get desperate. This is a song about L-O-V-E, and if you abuse it, you're gonna lose it, and if you lose it, you're gonna abuse it, and if you abuse it, you ain't gonna be able to choose it, because you ain't gonna have it further on down the line, things ain't gonna be so fine, you're gonna be sitting there on your little machine, trying to look and keep it clean, you're gonna be playing bingo all night all alone, that's why you're sitting there by the telephone, and you know that she ain't going to call you. So you put on the TV and you're watching Johnny Carson segueing right into the Tomorrow Show, but that don't got to go. So you turn it off, you turn on the radio. The radio don't seem to get the click. So you say, hey, man, I can't look at the split. You start to open up a little book and there's something there you got to overlook. You say, baby, you know there's something on my mind. You say, baby, there's something on my mind. I know that you're home and I know you ain't all alone. So you start walking over to a house. You get over to a house, you walk over to a door. You start pounding on the door. You say, open up the door, bitch. It's Wolf of Goo the Green Tea. Let me in. 
Mm. Well, she opens up the door and then you just kind of walk up to her and say, baby. You look up way up at a green mascara and you say, oh, my darling. You know, her and me was at the party as friends. Do not believe what they say. That's only gossip that they're telling you down the wisecracker line. You say, darling. Take your big curls and just squeeze them down, Rotumba. What's the name Rapunzel. of that chick with the long hair? <laughs> Rapunzel. That's right. Hey, Rapunzel. <laughs> hey, Reputa. <laughs> Reputa the Buda. Hey, Reputa the Buda. Let me down your hair. Let me climb up to the ladder of your love. Because this is Wolf of Goover saying to you. Love comes once and when it comes, you better grab it fast. Because yeah. sometimes the love you grab ain't going to last. And I believe I must have. You know, I think I must have. Yeah. You know, baby, I think I must have. You know, I think I must have. I must have got love. Yeah. <laughs> what an intro. That organ sounds sweet, doesn't it? I just don't understand it. I just don't understand it. I just don't understand it. And I must have got lost. Must have got lost. Must have got lost. Somewhere down the line. Hey. Must have got lost, baby. I got lost, girl. Give away the day. Sure, the uh, crowd's jamming out to this. I love the use of the organ in rock and roll, man. It deepens the conviction and delivery. It's 
seems to have more essence to what the singer is trying to convey. know the crowd would like that that shit would bring anybody would wake anybody up bring them alive get them moving <laughs> especially that little intro rap in the beginning good touch all right man so this is what early jay giles band sounded like in the 70s and you know it's uh it's really cool when you have a band like this established in the 70s now i don't know how successful they were i don't know if they were crazy successful in the 70s if they were just moderately okay or whatever the case is yeah i, I know that they were very very successful in the 80s but um in your opinion if you know the jay giles band well what era time wise um are you more in favor of with the jay giles band the 70s or the 80s let me know about that must have got lost is a rock song by American rock band, the Jay Giles Band. Released in 74, the single reached number 12 the following year. All music critic Joe Viglion, Viglion described it as one of the most memorable tunes by the Jay Giles Band. Billboard described the melody as one long hook and the song of the song and the sound of the song as funky. This song is featured in the 2004 Disney movie Miracle and in the end credits of the series finale of Eastbound and Down. The title is grammatically incorrect and can be said to be an example of a common headcorn. In all music, uh, Joe Viglione, I guess this is the whole um, review. Holy cow, it's lengthy. It's two paragraphs. Okay, let's read it. It's more the album. So, the album, Nightmares and Other Tales from the Vinyl Jungle, spawned the biggest Atlantic hit for the Jay Giles band, the wonderfully obsessive, questioning dilemma titled, Must Have Got Lost. Here the Jay Giles band are at the peak of their powers in the days prior to Freeze Frame and lustful songs like Centerfold, Must Have Got Lost being the only of their three Atlantic Top 40 hits to land in the Top 15. Seth Justman and Peter Wolf share all the songwriting credits here, save the intriguing camp funk of the Andre Williams Leo Sutton composition, Funky Judge. It's Peter Wolf's pant pantomime vocal entwined with the band's serious blues that creates something very special. Sorry guys, I can't pronounce very well when I'm uh, drinking sugarcane rum. The final track. Getting Out is five minutes plus of this intense, earthy rock uh, produced Bill... God damn, man. How the hell do you pronounce this name? Bill... Zemick. I'm sorry, sir. Sorry for butchering your name. S-Z-Y-M-C-Z-Y-K. That guy. Capturing in the studio that energy the band generated in concert. Bassist Danny Klein told AMG he loved the Gene Lareg. Yeah, man, I gotta stop drinking this shit because I can't even read properly. Laragu. Gene. L A G A R R I G I E U E. Drawing on the album jacket, noting Wolf found the handwriting. It got in a best rock album cover art book. This was a natural progression from 1973's Ladies Invented, the band's arrangements working perfectly with Zemeczak's production, with Detroit Breakdown being a tip of the hat to the group's second home outside of Boston. Magic Dick makes a great statement over Seth Jessman's foundation piano sound, one that evolves from that instrument to organ, giving Jay Giles a chance to throw some haunting guitar guitar work over its conclusion. Yeah, man, that organ really came in, didn't it? The song's six-minute length is topped only by the nearly seven minutes of Stoop Down, Stoop Down number 39, perhaps a dig at the James Gang's 
funk number 49 from four years prior. Giving it all up and look me in the eye are the bands showing precision in their craft, releasing quite a bit of music between 1973's popular Give It To Me, the ladies inv uh, invited album that same year, and this solid effort. The short one minute, 14 second title track, Nightmares, sounds like an ode to nitrous oxide, laughing gas, and probably was. The album produces one of the effects of that drug exhilaration and is a fine example of their creative musical journey. All right, that's the all music review of the album, man. Uh, the song got its props, but the overall album um, got its props as well. All right, so let's hit up our next track, man. That being Just Can't Stop Me. All right. Just Can't Stop Me, the Boston Garden. Uh, 1979. This is just part one. Let's get it. I'm gonna drink some more. Who the hell am I kidding?
good authority, isn't it? <laughs> right on. Right on, man. These guys really know how to get you moving. Just can't stop. And this was uh, the Boston Gardens in 79. So here's a question. A lot of acts um, kind of took a break in between their 70s career and their 80s career. I guess time to reinvent themselves, take a break from touring, uh, clean themselves up. You know, uh, that crazy haze from the 70s, they've survived it and they said, okay, I've still got uh, something to offer. We're going into the 80s. This is something different. Got to recreate them uh, ourselves and, uh, you know, go through that process of seeing if our sound, if we have to change our signature sound to accommodate the 80s or whatever the case is. So question is, did these guys take a break um, from the 70s to the 80s? You know, did they take some time to change up their sound or did they just keep going? It was just, you know, that, because I'm not seeing a lot of bands in the 70s going all the way straight through into the 80s without taking a break, without recreating their sound, without uh, maybe switching things up, switching personnel out, whatever the case is. Let me know about that. Did the Jay Giles band take a break, that transitional period, I would guess, from uh, the 70s into the 80s? Or did they just keep steamrolling all the way? They didn't probably even change up their signature sound much or whatever. Let me know about that because I know a lot of bands from the 70s have to do that, I don't know, mid-course correction, you know, going into the 80s. Let me know about that. That'd be quite interesting. Okay. Yeah. So not much on this song at all, man. Uh, Wikipedia is only giving us a half paragraph. Just Can't Stop appears on Showtime. It's the third and final live album by American rock band, the Jay Giles Band, released in 82. It was recorded at the Pine Knob Music Theater in Clarkston, um, Michigan, September 4th, 1982. This was the last release by the band before frontman Peter Wolf's departure in 83. Okay, okay. That's interesting. So the Jay Giles Band, um, did they continue after 83 in the form of um, just concerts and just reoccurring concerts using their existing material? Or with Peter's departure, did they still create new material? I'm being inclined to think not. So, um, and where are they now? Are they still around? Or, or did they get together over the period of a couple of uh, years? prior or whatever, give me a little update as to what is happening with the Jay Giles band. <clears throat> as well, why did Peter Wolf depart? Um, it seems like he's a very, very key element in there, uh, especially here with the live stuff, you know, he is just all over the place and he's, he's the guy to watch, you know. So what happened? Why did he depart? Was it um, creative differences? Was he burned out and he just wanted to retire? Did he have some vices that he had to take care of? Why did Peter Wolf depart? Let me know that. All right, let's hit up our next track. Whammer Jammer. All right. Jay Giles Band, Whammer Jammer. And this was in 79 as well. Let's get it. Outside of Chicago, Maddie Dillon, hey, do a little whammer jammer.
respecting his own language with that program. You know that could have been an extended jam right there. Probably is.